Hey, I'm Robert. Um, this is Level with me. This is my like one hour ish, like each episode, uh, level design streaming show where I play a game and then kind of pretend I made it or something. And um, also just like talk about like stuff I'm noticing in the environment art and level design and stuff. And right now we're kind of in the middle of Half Life 1 in a chapter called Residue Processing, which is kind of like this weird incomprehensible like toxic waste sewer part of half-life one although now we're in this weird conveyor belt section anyway you'll see it when we start um so right now we're this is half-life one um we just finished like doing some weird jumping puzzles where we like jumped over all these like weird chunks floating in some toxic waste bats or something um so now we're here and um, let's try to get through what's usually known as one of the worst parts of Half-Life 1. Um, so here there's like conveyor belts. Um, I'll jump down here and see what's going on here though. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Can I go down there? I guess not. Um, breaking over, open these crates to try to get some ammo, if I can find any. Um, and then I guess I have to. Oh god, look at these texture scenes. Ugh, I wish it could just be not. Ugh, like, couldn't they do it better? I don't know. Anyway, um, let's come back here and go up this conveyor belt if I can. So, now I have to ride all these conveyor belts, and it's like very platformy. Oh, and now I'm in this underwater section. Um, I think most players would end up swimming down there first, but if you swim down there, you see this giant thing that's going to kill you. Um, so you can't really stay down there, so we have to stay up here instead. Uh, but then this isn't the right way out, so we have to go back and swim back out. Um, so again, we're in this weird, like, toxic waste, like, metal, like, rusty, like, meat disposal section now, which is after the toxic waste section. Um, so let's explore a bit. Oh, this door's locked. It made a locked sound. Um, so now I guess I'll go this way. I can't go that way either. Uh, I don't remember where I'm supposed to go. Maybe I'm supposed to go down here and then go up here? Oh, what's in there? Am I supposed to go there? Oh, wait. Oh, I come back here. You know, I bypassed that dangerous section. Um, now let's try going down here and come back up. Um, oh, hi, Michael. Um, so, how am I supposed to go? I don't know, swimming. Oh, God, that pipe texture on the ceiling is horrendous. Oh, my God, that looks so bad. Um, wish they just chose, like, a plain dark texture for that. That just looks so repetitive, it's tiling so much. Um, but these wall textures aren't that bad. I actually kind of like these wall textures. Um, okay, I think I'm supposed to go... What's over here? Am I supposed to go... I'm supposed to swim underwater and not die from these fire traps? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Let's try that. And I duck underneath this like meat grinder thing, which is here for some reason. Um, and I come out here, take a breath, um, oh, this is really ugly, couldn't they have modeled this a little bit better? Oh well. Um, go up here, I don't need any health, so that's why I didn't heal. I actually kind of like this room, actually. There, you know, there's some, um, in level design, uh, we often think of better level design involves a lot of, like, height difference and stuff, because if the level's just flat, the whole way through, it's kind of boring. It's like, why do you even need that third dimension? But here there's some kind of like nice height difference stuff going on, like platforms going on to platforms, and there's this kind of landing right here. It's kind of nice. Um, can I go through here? Oh, then what's this? Oh, I think this is where I was before, except that now there's blood down here? I don't know. Oh, okay, that's from like these weird body parts falling down and landing there. Uh, okay, let's not go there, but I guess that's like if I get lost or trapped or something and I end up back here I have an easy way to get back to where I was, so I guess that's kind of like a checkpoint kind of thing um, 
Oh, there's a flashing red light up there. That's kind of an interesting detail. But still, that ceiling texture, I'm not feeling it at all. Um, I like these octagon kind of shapes, though. That's kind of nice. Uh, okay, let's go back down. Keep swimming along here. I think I'm supposed to. Uh, the, the ceiling on this tunnel's too low. I can't go up for breath. So I have to somehow not die here. Oh god. And now I'm on, I'm on this section where there's like conveyor belts and like trash compactors or something. Um, oh, now I have a gun. Now I can shoot that monster. Uh, I didn't have a gun before because uh, if you've been following the previous level, I just went through this weird like Star Wars trash compactor section where I lost all my weapons. Oh, that's bad Z fighting. They like sunk this shelf in here for some reason. I guess it's not. That's a favorite trip of trick of Bethesda uh, in like Elder Scrolls and Fallout games. If you want to make a lower shelf, you just sink the whole shelf lower. But here, if you do it kind of sloppy, uh, it doesn't exactly work that well. Um, let's keep going. Uh, what's up here? I don't even know what's up here. Oh, I'm back to where I am. Actually, you know, maybe the level design in here isn't that bad. Because uh, this is a characteristic that we usually like in level design as well, which is the idea that you kind of revisit back to previous locations. Uh, usually, we can think of this almost as like a hub kind of room. Oops. Um, and then we're kind of unlocking parts of the hub, kind of, when we return. Um, but this level's so short, it's almost kind of like unnecessary, I don't know. What's down here? Oh, there's a monster down here. Just kill him. Um, I guess if we fall off this section, we'll end up here, and then we have to- Oh, that's a bad scene right here. So, water in Half-Life 1 is like a really weird case, like, slash hack where they had it kind of go up and down. If you can see the scene between the different water, like bodies of water here. I don't know why they did this, though. Um, ideally, you just keep it all as one piece so that you don't see the scene here. I don't know why there's two separate pieces here. Um, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but oh well. Oh, I like this bit for some reason. I like how the, there's kind of detail right here. Anyway, uh, keep going back up here. I guess these levers will control these weird stomping things, so I'll just pull some. I don't really know what these do though. Oh, wait, no. Conveyor control. That's what the sign says. I'm stuck now. I actually can't move. When I pulled this lever down, it intersected with my player collision, and I'm stuck. Okay, now I'm free again. That's bad. They should mark that as non-solid. Um... I don't really know what I'm doing. Am I supposed to just pull all these? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Should, am I supposed to pull this one? It's not really clear what these levers are. I guess they're changing the direction of these conveyor belts, I guess. Um, but... It's not clear why I would do that, really. And this is also kind of bad. Um, direction control of the player camera as well. Uh, a modern FPS would have rotated this whole station to the left 90 degrees and put it right here so that every time I pull a lever I can clearly see what it's doing. Um, but here it's like I have to constantly look here, pull this lever, look back here and guess what happened. Uh, which is pretty bad, I think. Uh, let's come back here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, I'm gonna save and see if I die here. Oh, I just died. <laughs> um, okay, I guess I'll pull these other levers. Um, uh, does that do anything? Uh, does this do anything? Wait, why can't I pull this? Okay, I'll pull that. Oh, I think I'm supposed to... Okay, I see how it is. I think these different conveyor belts are different speeds. So I was supposed to figure out that these left and right conveyor belts are always going to be too slow to avoid the stomping thing. Meanwhile, this middle one seems to be scrolling faster than the others. So maybe that's my ticket out of here. No, I just died again. Um... Uh... 
So maybe it's the exact opposite of what I said? Uh, <laughs> um, or am I supposed to see which stomping machine is slowest? Um, I don't know. This is why platforming in the first person mode is really bad. So I'm just going to take um, a prerogative here and just uh, ghost my way through this thing. And I solved the puzzle. God, I'm so great. Look at how smart I am. Um, I think the Black Mesa version is probably better. They probably made that a bit more clear. Um, okay, now I'm on this other conveyor belt again. What am I doing here? What's over here? Oh, if I fall down here, I can... Oh, that's really weird. That's a weird, like, fixture to put there. Like, right? That's just so random. Ugh, okay. Um, let's climb up this ladder again and go on here again. I thought there would be, like, a power up here in case I, like, lost health or something, but... Why even have that gap? Why even let me fall down at all if I'm not supposed to? That's, that's kind of a weird choice. Um, okay. Let's come back and try to go through the this, like, stompy phase. Okay. okay. I think I'm doing okay here. Okay, okay. Oh, another stompy phase. I think this is out of... This reminds me of Star Wars Episode 2, where they have this nonsensical part in the movie where they're, like, in a factory level or something, and they're like... It's just all the weird parts of Star Wars involve getting, like, crushed and compressed, and I think that's what they're trying to evoke here. I don't know. Okay, try not to get stumped here. Uh, okay, okay. Oh god, I just died. Okay, let's try not to get stomped this time. Okay, I'll go through here. What am I supposed to do here? Why am I not? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna make a break for it again. Okay, I got through. Okay, hopefully that's the- oh my god, no, I forgot about this part. Okay, so then this conveyor belt ends with this part where, um, it's in this giant room with even more conveyor belts. Um, and then somehow I have to not do that. Oh god. Um, and then if I ever fall off all these conveyor belts, I have to, like, find my way back up here. Um... Find my way back up there, and then try to do the whole conveyor belt thing again. Um, which is kind of terrible. Uh, where am I supposed to go? Is that a thing? No. you think they'd leave some health down here from when you fall down, but... Oh, there's a monster here. Um, but for some reason, that's not the case here. Uh, am I supposed to go here, maybe? No, I think I have to go all the way back up all the way up these stairs and try that whole conveyor belt section again. Is that what this is? Where am I even going? And then everything here looks the same. Okay, I'll follow these stairs signs. Like, you know your level design is just so terrible when it's like... when you need to literally put signs everywhere to literally signpost the player about everything. Um, that's just kind of like the last ditch solution, like literally a sign saying go here, go here. That's not good design, I would say. Oh no. Oh no, okay, there's some help. Nice. I'll try to get 69 health, um, and then keep going. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna try to do that whole sequence again. Oh, except it's a little bit easier. I have ready access to this conveyor belt here. Okay. Let's see what terrible level design is here. Um, okay. Uh, jump down here. Um, okay, I guess I go this way. I don't think I go backwards. Okay, and I keep going down into this conveyor belt. It, I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what the objective in this level is. That looks like an incinerator, though. I don't think I'm supposed to go in the incinerator. Um, I think I'm supposed to walk on this lip right here. Maybe that's why it has caution stripes on it. I'm supposed to notice it. I hope so. Um, but that's too far for me to jump. 
Was I right? No, I don't think so. I don't think this is what I was supposed to do. But then why even have this lip here? Um, that's kind of strange. Am I supposed to go this way, maybe? Oh, yeah. Okay, now I'm supposed to jump over there. Okay. But what does this give me? What? Why? Why did I do that? <laughs> what is going on? Um, I think I'm back where I started, like literally. Um, um, okay. Uh, I have no idea what I did wrong, so I'm gonna just try that all again. Um, oh, JP in the chat brings up that this is almost kind of more like a Looney Tunes, like Bugs Bunny kind of sequence. It's like so silly and cartoony, um, which is true. Um, I guess I'll go that way. I guess I'll go here again. I took a wrong turn somewhere. I don't think I'm supposed to go this way. It's, it's pretty hard to go backwards, so I guess I'm supposed to keep going this way. But then isn't this... Wasn't this the problem I fell into before already? Am I supposed to go backwards here? But when I crouch, I'm going way too slow to go backwards. Okay, I'll just go forward again. I mean, I like the lighting. I like how the interiors are kind of red, and then everything else is kind of more gray, white, fluorescent lighting, so... I mean, it's kind of nice, that differentiation, so I'm always just looking for red lighting. Maybe this isn't... This, maybe this won't kill me. Maybe it's okay. Oh, no, it's just giving me damage. I could have just gone through there the whole time. Ugh, okay. That's like a false affordance, or like a false perceived affordance thing. Strange. Uh, okay, here I am again. Oh, there's body parts all over here again. Um, okay, I'm supposed to go on this conveyor belt, I think. And then I have to go on one of these conveyor belts. I think I go on this one. But then I don't know what's going on here. Did I take the wrong turn? No, I think I'm okay. Oh, and I'm supposed to jump here, right? I think I'm supposed to jump here. Wait, no! Crap, wait. Is this where I was before? Wait, no, 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 wait. Wait, could I have just done that the whole time? Wait, no, wait, what did I just do? Oh, shh. Okay, I'm just gonna no quit back to where I was. Because I think I wasn't supposed to do that. Wait, is this back to where I was before? I'm so confused right now. I think I just went in a big circle again. Okay, I'm gonna go back, do all that crap again. I have no idea what's going on because everything looks just like the same concrete, like metal everywhere. Every room literally looks the same. Um, I have no idea what's going on. I think I'm supposed to go a different way. I think I'm not supposed to go forward. Maybe I'm supposed to go this way. Oh yeah, but there's a trip mine here. So I have to run this way so that I have enough time to shoot the trip mine here and not die from it. But what if you don't have ammo? What would you do? Like, wouldn't you just die? Okay. Anyway, I had barely enough ammo to kill all that. Um, and now I'm on this roller section. This is like very quick one-ish, like platforming silliness right here except actually no this is not too bad oh shit okay no it's really bad it's awful i take back every good thing i said about this um okay let's try that again i thought the railing here was gonna like help you know um help like contain me when i jump across but it's actually so low i end up just jumping over that as well but i think i'm okay here uh, okay, let's keep going. In the chat, people are concurring that the level design in here is bad. So it's not just me. Oh, and then here's another, like, weird trash compactor sequence. Um, 
What am I supposed to do? I kind of like these light fixtures at the top, though. I like how this room is lit, kind of. Um, the, you know, the ceiling's kind of dark, which is kind of nice. It kind of pulls your attention away from the ceiling. Um, but I have to not get destroyed by this, I guess. I have to time my landing just right. Okay, now I'm in this radioactive sewer section. I guess this is where all the body parts go, and then you put them in the radioactive waste dump or something, because that's what government facilities do. I don't... None of this makes sense. Okay, so I like the texturing in this room a lot, and I kind of like... Uh, they even have some nice reverb going on in this room as well. Um, and then um, they have this... This lighting is really weird. Why would you light the ladder light like that. I feel like you should just put a light fixture there or a light fixture here or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. This this isn't a good look, I think. Uh, and I'll keep going. Very thin metal corridor. And by now we've seen this a lot, by the way. Um, this is what we call, again, like an S-shaped corridor. Or here it looks more like a looks more like a question mark almost. We do this U-bend um, in level design again to signal um, to like break up the whole uh, level transition so that when I'm over in this level, I can't see into that previous level. Here, there's some good not level transitions. You know, like not all level transitions are made equal. This is like a clearly just big afterthought room where these level designers were probably working separately and they didn't even know where in the game their section would be slotted into. And then suddenly they're like, oh, we have to connect these rooms somehow. Um, let's just build this random cramped metal room thing. Anyway, now we're in this new chapter called Questionable Ethics. Um, and thank god we're out of that terrible platforming set, like radioactive platforming section. Uh, now we're in a section that's gonna bring back a lot of combat, also introduce a new enemy called the Alien Grunt. Um, and also, it's actually a really interesting level layout, this level, so let's get into it. Gonna break that open. Oh my god, it's a trap! I'm gonna like die here, I think. I have no ammo, by the way. Oh, okay, that did it. I wonder why I do have no ammo, that's weird. Um, so I just, like, throw a bomb on them and kill them. It's not very subtle, but... But also sad, because those are my favorite enemies. Um, I guess I'm supposed to jump over the fence. And um, by now in Half-Life 1, you're supposed to know what a good jump height is, you know? Um, like, this looks jumpable, but it's only jumpable if I jump and crouch as well. Um, and that height is at 48 units tall, and then this, this is, looks about 64 units tall. So by now, you're supposed to be able to measure things kind of roughly and know about where you're supposed to jump. Oh, and I got electrocuted when I touched that fence. Ow. Uh, I guess I'll just heal myself again, though. Um, okay. Let's save and continue. I still have no ammo. I still don't know what I'm doing. Oh, oh wait. I have some bullets in here. Okay. That's not so bad. Uh, the revolver is a bad choice against those hound eyes. Okay, so now we're in here. This is kind of them introducing this enemy here. Um, we've never seen this enemy in the- Oh my god! I thought I was safe. Okay, there, I killed it. Um, so... But that was weird, right? The glass didn't break, but the metal part casing below here broke? Um, that's bad scripting. Um, because uh, in original Half-Life, if you want something to be like glass, that had to be one object, and then the metal part had to be a different object, because glass is transparent. So what the level designer should have done was automatically script it so that when the glass breaks, it automatically breaks the metal part as well. Um, but that was some forgetful design there. Um, but yeah, this was the reveal, I guess. I was supposed to press this button, maybe? Wait, is it gonna flood it with, like, poisonous gas? Am I gonna die now? 
Should I not be doing this? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna go in this room now. Uh, I have no idea what that was supposed to do. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, so it's introducing more enemies to us. Um, uh, and we're in a different, very different setting now. We went straight out of the radioactive sewer and into this kind of bluish, kind of clean lab kind of setting where it's, it's kind of nice looking. It looks like 80s, 90s, like modernist stuff. Um, now I'm going to go here, press this button, see what that does. And I'm locked into this room and I'm going to watch all those poor little headcrabs get destroyed. By this like weird energy beam thing. So this is usually um, this whole section is usually regarded as like good environmental storytelling. Oh my god! This is usually regarded as good environmental storytelling because here it's like interactive. You know, we're not just looking at you know blood written on the wall saying like. Like, um, you know, like, oh, remember, remember, blah, 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 right? You know, that's kind of what environmental storytelling is these days, kind of, or like toilet dioramas or something. Um, but here, this is like an interactive whole set piece that someone built out. Um, and again, that's considered better because it's like interactive, you're participating in it. You don't really know what this machine does at first, but then it like locks you in. Um, and it's supposed to be telling this story about how like, um, how like the Black Mesa human scientists knew about the aliens and were experimenting on the aliens. And this is clearly like a test suite where we knew what was going on and it's a whole government conspiracy thing. Um, I don't think, personally, I don't think these levels communicate that idea too well. Um, or at least when I first played it, um, when I was young, I didn't really get that sense that well. Hey, it's no good up there. It's all sealed off. The only way out. That's kind of weird. Find someone with scanner access. How did that soldier get here? Sure if this guy was here the whole time. The anyway, I guess they just spawned them there. We can track them down and get them to let us out. Anyway, I guess he just told me what to do. I'll just, uh, I can press E, I can interact with him to get him to follow me. Very basic kind of follow behavior. Um, interesting development story is that's actually kind of like a debug feature to test the AI and pathfinding. They implement this debug thing where you get people to follow you. And then when they were testing levels, they found out that it was kind of fun to get people to follow you. Um, so then they kind of incorporate that as like a full proper game mechanic. Ooh, and then here's like a little stealthy thing where these soldiers don't see us and I can probably snipe them. <clears throat> Unless this dummy gives away our position and I have no ammo. Why do I still have no ammo? Oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for them to come up to me. And then I'm gonna throw this backpack at them and detonate it on them. I guess that's why I need this guy to help me. Uh, okay. He's good at killing them, actually. Oh no, he died already. Oh well, he served his use. Okay, now I have a gun. Now I can actually, like, do stuff now. Um, but, you know, that's one of the universal pleasures of a lot of these games. Watching stuff fight other stuff, like, on your behalf. Um, let's, I'm gonna charge up my armor here a little bit. Um, and in the chat they're commenting how that security guard, the Barney, he was good at hitting those soldiers. And those, because he had a pistol, which is accurate at a longer distance. Meanwhile, these soldiers didn't really know how to react, I guess. They didn't know to, like, run up to him. Or they couldn't find a good flanking node. I don't know. Um, anyway... I'll just pick up this ammo right here. Um, anyway, this this chapter, again, um, it's probably known as one of the better designed level design, uh, level design-y kind of things, because, I don't know, like, the architecture is kind of interesting, and they have this interesting lighting here. Like, that's pretty good, I would say. Um, they also have this other stuff where this is, like, our hub room that we're going to be returning to kind of often and circling back. 
And again, this circling back kind of trajectory for the player is thought to be better because that means uh, that's like how we relate to spaces in real life. We're constantly returning back to places we previously visited, and that feels realistic. Um, by now, our objective is maybe to leave this facility, but we know from previous levels that we can't go through this door without this retina scan thing, and even put this sign here in case we forgot it, and even have this flash. And if I try to use it, it doesn't work because authorized personnel only. So now my objective kind of is to find a scientist as that guy told us we're supposed to. So let's keep going. Um, as with many hubs, the feeling of freedom is an illusion here. Um, these doors actually don't work. I only have one possible way I can go, so I'll just go this way. Um, I think that door's locked as well, so I'll go this way. Oh, this guy already died. Who killed this guy? Oh well. Um, I'll keep going this way. Go on this door. Wasn't I just here? Oh, they reused the room in an interesting way. Huh, I never noticed they reused the room. This is the room before where we killed those head crabs in the middle, except this time, um, they're in these cages. And now we have to kill them again. Um, I guess we have to press this button to open the doors, and I'm gonna run in here and then try to shut myself in and then kill all these head crabs. So let's try that. Oh my god, and I'm gonna run in here. And I'm gonna close this door, and hopefully this thing will incinerate all of them. But now I feel kinda bad. I don't know, it's not their fault. Oh, heal too. Oh, that didn't kill them though. They were protected inside the room still. So the way we make sure things kill stuff is we have to denote like an invisible like volume called a trigger. And if something is inside that trigger, we can kill or damage things inside that trigger. But here you can see the bounds of that trigger end at that door. So in a strange way, I actually have to like lure them all out here so that they can get killed. And then I can trigger this. And now the trigger volume will actually kill them. Although it really would have been easier to just shoot them all, really. I don't know why I'm bothering with all this. Um... Okay, I'll keep going here. Uh, one thing you'll notice, this thingy is, I think, kind of intentionally resembling the big disaster machine we triggered at the very start of the game um, that caused the whole disaster or something. So I think it's supposed to kind of evoke the same kind of machine that they've been using this machine for a while. Anyway, once we did all that and got that cleared up, um, you can see this thing. This is a new weapon I'm about to pick up. Um, these are called Snarks. They're kind of like the unofficial mascot of Half-Life 1. Probably because they're very cute, but also they're kind of fun to use, as you'll see in a bit. A Snark is a little monster. You just throw at them, and then they, like, attack them. But they're also very weak. But they're ki kind of like little Pokemon you throw out. It's kind of fun. But then they also like just self-destruct after a little bit anyway. Um, let's keep going. And now I'm in this other room. Oh, I kind of like the consistency here. I kind of like how they have like a little light bay right here. Uh, it's like an interesting corridor. Like they actually put some time into constructing it. And then they also like, wow, this is high class. Look, they even aligned this little red cube like thing with the rest of the texture. You know, that's that's very classy. You know, that's that's triple A right there. Um, I'm going to keep going through this level. Do I go here? Oh, now I'm back to where I was. For some reason, when I entered this door from the other way, it's now magically unlocked. Again, weird video game contrivance that we accept. 
because it's a video game. Uh, keep going here. Um, I like the differentiation here. I like how this is like a concrete room. And this is different from these other rooms. You know, like, you know, separate materials and stuff. I like that. Um, also nice how the ceiling here is kind of low. So that when I go into this room, the ceiling feels much higher. I pointed out that effect a lot. Um, and here it's used yet again. I forget what I'm supposed to do here. I think if I press these buttons, it does a bad thing. I think. Uh, let's see what this does. Oh, wait, these aren't buttons I can press anyway. Huh. Can't I press any buttons here? Can I press buttons there? What's the point of this? Do I shoot this? Do I shoot this? Uh, oh, I'm supposed to go up to this control room up here, I guess, and that'll do something. Uh, okay. I guess I'll just keep going. Oh, and all these trip mines. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna go up here. It's giving me all these trip mines for a reason. I guess it's because um, it's gonna spawn all these enemies or something. Um, by now we know that uh, they keep those alien armored soldiers inside these tanks, I guess. So that means I should prepare a little bit by setting up some traps that they can't sneak up on me. Although, I don't know if they actually will. I don't know if they're smart enough for that. Um, wait, what am I supposed to do here? What? I thought there'd be a button up here for me to press. But instead, there's nothing for me to press? Am I supposed to shoot that thing? Oh yeah, and sure enough, here are the monsters. Now they shoot special bullets that are homing bullets. Um, so I have to be careful around them. But these human grunts already took care of all the aliens. Are they even going to come up here? Oh, I guess all my mines already blew up. Oh well. Uh, okay, I guess everyone died. That was kind of anticlimactic for like this whole set piece room that they built, right? With like destructible scenery, you know? You know, they incorporate all this stuff and then it was kind of a letdown in the end. Oh well. Let's keep going. Oh, there's some like weird random explosive crates. I guess I'm supposed to blow those up. I don't know why I did that though. Uh, okay, well, anyway, let's keep- that's random. Oh, I'm supposed to trick that guy into getting over here, and then I'd blow- but why do all that? That's- anyway, uh, let's keep going. You know, like, sometimes it's hard to, like, divine exactly what the level designer was thinking. Oh, I like this hallway. I like the lighting motif here. The texture bothers me a little because it's not, like, you know, actually following the contour of the hallway, so that's kind of distracting, but I do like all these little spotlights, uh, downlights here. That's kind of nice. Um, as I walk forward, I pass by this room. The door's blocked, but here I see some weird spinning blade thing, so I guess I'll have to come back to that. Um, I can break open these crates. Oh, ow, that was a trap, I guess. Um, but I can't do anything about it, because this is unbreakable. Um, but now I know because I can see into this area, I can kind of assume that I'm supposed to go there eventually. Um, and that's a, that's a school of level design thought that a lot of people like play with, you know? So the thinking is that if you create inaccessible areas that the player will e never go to, that's supposed to be like the ultimate in like immersion or something. Um, I don't know if I agree with that anymore, but that's what people used to think at least. Oh. I'm just gonna kill those people. Why wasn't the electricity killing them? Oh well. And if I come back here, I end up back in this hub, even though really there's no point in coming back here. I mean, maybe if I charge up a little bit. Well, that didn't really help. 
But again, there's no real point in coming back here yet. But again, inter interconnectivity is supposed to feel more realistic, which is supposed to be better level design. Uh, come back here. Notice again that this stairwell was U-shaped, so we could do the break in the level load streaming transition again. Now I'm here. Now I get to watch these NP NPCs fight, which is supposed to be really cool and fun. I guess I'm enjoying myself. This is kind of enjoyable. Oh god. Oh, I don't want to kill them. Okay. Well, I don't hear anything. I guess everything died now. That's kind of one sad thing, I think, about this era of level design and first-person shooters. Some kind of weapon? Put that down. It's a oh, that's gonna explode. Um... Much too unpredictable. Don't let it overcharge. Well, what do you mean over? There's a comedic bit right now, just now, where we heard them say, "Don't, it'll overcharge," and then it killed whoever was here. Um, wait, but back to what I was saying. It's kind of sad when you're in a room and then you clear the room and then suddenly the world is just kind of dead and in this like dead state. Um, you know, that's kind of like, I don't know, sad. It's sad when you do this. Um, not a big fan of that kind of design, because now the world just feels kind of inert. Anyway, that was supposed to attract me to this room, where I press this button to begin the, like, puzzle solving process. Here we have this set piece where it, like, fires a laser, and the laser goes in these weird cube mirror things. And we can actually follow the cube mirror things. Uh, which is kind of cool. It looks kind of, and it makes like an interesting sound. Um, and then somehow we have to focus all the lasers into this, into this mirror right here. Um, and that's kind of our objective. So let's go ahead and try to do that. We have to go over here and activate this laser. Oh, that's sad. Uh, press this button here. I think if I touch the laser, I like die. Oh, I just get hurt a little. That's not so bad. Come back here. Um, people are mentioning the domed ceiling in the chat. People are saying the domed ceiling is kind of cool. Although not when it glitches out like that. But I imagine it would be cool most of the time. Um, yeah, that's actually kind of hard to construct a little bit. Um, you know, you have to think about that. I think the best reason for having this domed ceiling here, though, is that when the sunlight filters through it, it results in this interesting kind of pattern down here. Um, which is kind of cool. <laughs> I'm all for like interesting shadows and especially like weird contrived shadows. Uh, now I have to go here. What's over here? Oh, just this weird nook. I guess the grunts were hidden in there when they first started out. Um, picking up some uranium for this weapon. Uh, so this is called the Gauss Gun. The Gauss Gun lets me shoot lasers. Uh, the, interesting, the interesting thing about the Gauss Gun is that it can penetrate surfaces sometimes and also ricochets a lot. And you can also charge up the Gauss Gun and then shoot. And notice there was like recoil when I shot it. Uh, that turned into this mechanic called Gauss Jumping where you would charge it up. Kind of like rocket jumping except you'd, you'd use this thing, the Gauss Gun, instead. Uh, let's go ahead and solve this puzzle here. Where I charge- I like this shelving unit, actually. This is kind of nice and thoughtful. Nice color to it. And it's kind of not clear where the light source is, also. Which is kind of what an expensive shelving unit would look like. You wouldn't even be able to see the light fixture. It would be, like, hidden in the seams. Uh, let's keep going here. Um, and now- oh, is everything charged up yet? I think it, everything is. Can I press this button yet? No, not yet. Um, I guess I have to charge up another laser, but I don't know where else I'm supposed to go to charge up this laser. Maybe I missed something. Um, oh, something here? Oh, this room back here. Okay. And again, I kind of like this, you know, this room clearly has like a task to it. 
Um, and I think that's what better level design is, you know? Like, this corridor is just kind of vague and multi-purpose and, you know, it doesn't really have a function, but here, this is kind of nice because there's, like, consoles. You can imagine people, like, walking around and working here. Um, it's nice when a room has a task and you can kind of, like, grok that task and kind of guess what must have gone on there. Um, so here, a first-time player would just activate it immediately, like this. And then when they activate it, they would see the laser burn this hole in the screen, and then nothing happens. But then if I look down here, you can see this bulletproof glass for some reason. Um, that's the room I want to get down to, but this shield keeps obscuring it, and then that's when you might read this text that you might have ignored before, where it says, do not obstruct laser shield. And then you think, hmm, okay, I guess I'll obstruct the laser shield then. Um, one clever thing they do here, so here's a convenient box with which to obstruct the laser shield, but uh, you can't really move it too close, really. Um, and you can't even move it outside of this room because there's a very subtle kind of scene here. Or maybe there is no scene. Huh, that's weird. But anyway, it's kind of nice. I like how there's this lip here where I can just move the crate up against here and that's enough. So that I don't mistakenly move the crate too close in the actual path of the laser. So now when I do this again... Now it's blocked. And now the door can't close, which means it all explodes. This machine's actually kind of a cool construction. I like how there's a little, like, there's internal stuff that you can, like, look at, you know? There's, like, guts to this machine. Um, and it's also just constructed in this interesting way. It has, like, interesting angles to it. Um, actually, this whole top floor is probably considered pretty well designed, because there's just all these interesting shapes here. And notice that this corridor kind of like, breaks off in an interesting way. Like, the layout here makes interesting use of the symmetry here. Um, where we can imagine these are all separate wings and components of this machine feeding in there. Um, and that feels kind of nice, I think. I like the use of symmetry here. Come back here. Now I need to somehow drop down there without dying. Um... How am I going to do that, though? Uh, oh, okay, I'll walk on this lip here. And then when I walk on this lip, I can somehow jump to that pipe. So that the fall damage doesn't kill me. And then I'll fall on this lip here, and then go on this box. And then very, very sneaky level transition right there. That's actually, that's pretty impressive, actually. Recall that usually you're supposed to put level transitions in really small like boring corridors that's easy to sew up the levels but here this is like in the middle of a giant set piece room so i i'm pretty impressed by that oh oops sorry um okay now i have to go in this room a scientist thank god get us out of here before those military drones figure out where we're hiding we all have retinal scanner access escort us to the lobby and we can get out of the lab You'll have to shut down the surgical unit first. Peter so here, they're literally telling me how what to do now. Um, which is kind of boring, you know, but I guess maybe they did playtesting and found out players weren't always the best at trying to, like, realizing they could use these scientists to go back to that lobby hub room that we were in earlier. Um, but here, oh, there's three scientists, actually. That's kind of cool. Um... So I have to shut this down, and to shut this down, I have to go to that thing right there. Um, as I remember, this puzzle actually isn't that hard. Let me see. Like, they barely even damage you, really. Like, it's pretty easy to just run through that room. Um, but now I'm back here. And now I can actually I certainly hope you know what you're doing. Get them to follow me. Let's go. Slowing you down, am I? I guess I can only have a maximum of two step. people following me. This is as far as I go. 
Wait, why won't they follow me? What's wrong? All right. You're going to have to leave me. Oh, I didn't like remove it from their path yet. Oh my god. You won't even know I'm here. This is the worst. Okay. Why are you leaving me here? <laughs> why are you leaving me here? Um, okay. Uh I'll try to make sure there's leaves a path for them. Okay, that seems much more clear, right? They should be okay with that. Lead the way. Glad to oblige a fellow scientist. I'm going to stay here and wait for my colleagues. I think one hacky thing about this kind of trope where I have to find scientists to help me is that if I kill all the scientists, then it's just game over. And you know, that's kind of like, that's kind of hacky, you know, like, you know, like, you know, that's like a very easy way to fail that isn't like super interesting, right? Um, ideally, if this was, you know, like Deus Ex and we kill all these scientists, then maybe the scientist drops a key card and we pick up that key card and somehow open the door anyway, right? That's what you would do in a different game. Um, but in this game, at least, we don't have anything like that. So there's no inventory in Half-Life 1. So I can't kill this scientist and pick up a key card. You are going to have to leave me here, Gordon. Oh my god. Yes, let's go. Come on, ugh. And then the scientist will open the door for me. No. And now he's served his use, so I can kill him. Um, and now I'll keep going. Uh, and that ends that chapter. Oh god, that was gonna kill me. Oops. Oh my god, what's going on? Why is it doing this? Okay, now I'm okay. Okay, so that ends that section of it. Um, I think I'm gonna take a break and stop here. Um, but I hope that was enjoyable for you to watch. And the next time, uh, maybe next week, um, we'll go outside. And I think the next is a very iconic section. It's the dam section of Half-Life 1, um, which a lot of people have fond memories of. So um, see you next week. And thanks for hanging out and tuning in. Um, bye.